So let's start with this. Chris Paul to the Warriors. What? The old guy? Warrior fans hate Chris Paul. Chris Paul to the Warriors. What? I don't understand it. What does it mean? Well, it means the Warriors are older and smaller. No general manager as the league is pivoting to size is saying, please, I want to get older and smaller. What it also means is Steph Curry can now occasionally play off the ball because of his shooting ability and movement. He can play the two occasionally. Being the lead point guard, the ball handling, the leadership, the physicality, the scoring is a lot. It wears you down. And Steph is 35. So part of this, I believe, is to get Steph off the ball occasionally. Let him just go out there, move around, and shoot. It's easier. Did you see who the Warriors then drafted last night? Brandon Podzimski. He's Clay Thompson. West Coast kid, non-traditional basketball power, who can shoot and play immediately. So they could bring back for the season Clay and Staff and Peyton and Moody and the new kid in Chris Paul. Six guards, 50% of the roster for a team that felt too small last year? Really? This is why I think I would trade Clay Thompson. They just drafted Clay Thompson. Healthier, younger, can shoot. Kid's a great shooter. So GM Bob Myers, the architect of all this stuff, left. He had loyalties to a lot of these players. Mike Dunleavy Jr. does not. Maybe I'm wrong, but Chris Paul doesn't necessarily fit the Warriors. He's a plodding mid-range player, likes to walk it up the floor. The Warriors are all about speed and motion and threes. It doesn't fit, right? But it does if you're going to move Steph Curry off ball occasionally and then draft Clay's replacement. Oh, that's what they're going to do, I think. I mean, do you need Steph at two, Clay at two, and the new kid at two? How about one big that can score on the whole roster? Milwaukee's big. Boston just got bigger. Phoenix has size. Denver's huge. The Lakers are big. Another guard? I mean, in the, in the last couple of days, they got Chris Paul and another guard. Going to keep them all. Now, I knew they moved Jordan Poole. He wasn't going to fit. I'll get to that later. But I believe there has to be another move coming. It may be at the trading deadline. But if you go look at the Bulls dynasty, which Kerr was part of, it was always Phil Jackson, Michael, and Scotty. The rest of it, always movable. If you look at the Warriors dynasty, in my opinion, people think it's four. To me, it's three. Kerr, Steph, and Draymond, everything else is movable. But I don't think any GM in the league, including Mike Dunleavy Jr., I know he's young, I know it's his first gig as the boss, I don't think anybody in the league in 2023 is saying, you know what I want to get? Older and smaller at point guard. That's the game plan. I think it's part of something. I think they're going to do other things. I don't think they want half their roster to be guards, many of them small. I think they need low post scoring. I think they moved off Bob Myers or he moved off them for a reason. It's not a conspiracy theory. I just don't think Mike Dunleavy said the way through Denver and Phoenix, older and smaller. I think there's more moves coming. Speaking of moves or lack thereof, Portland did draft Scoot Henderson, dynamic guard. And, uh, you know, I used to work in Portland. I got a soft spot for Oregon teams. Four of the most talented Blazers are guards. Scoot Henderson, maybe the most talented. Dame, Anthony Simons, and Shaden Sharp. And they have one solid wing, Jeremy Grant. They're essentially now becoming the Warriors without any of the trophies. Steph and Clay, I understand the loyalty to Clay. You got the bag four times. You got the rings. The Blazers had Dame and C.J. McCollum. And they didn't get you trophies. They got you admiration. People like them. But I said it a hundred times then, break them up. It's duplication. What are you getting for it? You're not getting titles for it. Steph and Clay, I understand some loyalty. What you're getting, what are you getting with it? 11 years, four series wins. Break them up. They never did. And I'll say it again, too many guards. What are you going to get for it? Break them up. Send one packing. Scoot Henderson is the future. 
move Dame and get him help. This idea that Portland is close, 11 years, four series wins. Phoenix is better today. Denver's going nowhere. I'll make a prediction that OKC is the most improved team in the league next year. Oh, the Spurs just got Wemby. The Kings will be better with a year experience, right? Like the West was weird this year. It's coming back strong. OKC, San Antonio. I didn't even mention Memphis, but they may be better with Marcus Smart. Everybody in the West next year potentially is better, some way better. The Warriors aren't done making moves, I don't believe. Portland, guard heavy, holding on to Dame. Dame has a market. You can get pieces for Scoot. Because I don't believe it's a legitimate argument to say, let's move Anthony Simons and get a piece that will, what? Simons is not established enough. Dame's a Hall of Famer. So uh, to me, this feels like Portland 2-0 is that I kept for years and years saying, you know, I like CJ and Dame, but it, the, the ceiling's not high enough to keep it together. Like Steph and Clay, I get the loyalties. I get the struggles, the tears, that we can't break them up because of what you achieved. I don't get it here. Dame had a great career. He's a Hall of Famer. I'd be happier for Dame to go to Miami where he'd be their best scorer. He could win a championship. It would make Miami a complete utter handful, and it's exactly what they need. Smart veteran shot maker. But uh, you become the Warriors without any of the rings, without any of the success. I don't get that. Um, and I'll say it again with the West. I just wrote the teams down this morning in the West. The Nuggets, big, not beating them with four guards. Suns, if they keep Aiton, big. Kings, Warriors, Lakers, OKC, Spurs, Memphis. You're running out of spots. Dame's not getting younger. I don't know. I think the minute you draft Scoot, you've basically put a fingerprint on what you're doing next year and going forward. Years ago, when LeBron joined the Miami Heat, they got to about practice number two or three, and Dwayne Wade acknowledged, that guy's way better. And he told LeBron, this is going to be your team. And LeBron's like, no, it's your city. And D. Wade said, no, it's your team. You're the best player here. Dame's a great player, but after about four practices of Scoot, his, his youth, he'll be able to play 75 games. Um, he'll be a willing defender. You know, you're going to be, you're going to look around and go, we got to get Scoot some players. And Scoot's not going to win a title next year, but at least it's a solid direction and everybody gets it. Keeping these guys together, what are your paths? You've got two paths. I don't think either one of them get you close to a title. I think both of them get you maybe at best into the bottom of the playoffs. But all these guards in the bigger West make a move and you're not, and you're not moving off. I mean, your future is clearly Scoot Henderson. Nobody disputes that your near future could be Dame. How about just moving him and getting pieces around Scoot? Rebooting. 11 years, four playoff wins. It's not that emotionally hard. Be different if you had rings and trophies. You, you never really got close.